Hey, this is Lorena and I wanted to do a tutorial on how to get your fabric organized. The other day I went to uh, do a quilt for an elderly community and uh, I was looking for the back fabric and as I was going through a basket looking for fabric here, wandering into another room looking for fabric there, I don't think I'm the only one, but you know, you're pulling out all this fabric and it's a mess in one area and then you go in another space and you're digging through all that fabric and you, you're, you're digging through all that fabric and you have another mess in another area. And I had like four or five areas that were full of just um, bundled up fabric everywhere. So I really became overwhelmed and I decided, okay, you got to do something about this. But I also saw a video recently of someone organizing their fabric and it looked delicious. And I said, oh my God, I want to do that. Uh, the only issue that I had is that she was purchasing the boards. And I think she was purchasing, she says the boards were really expensive. And I'm not going to pay for boards. So I've decided that I wanted to go ahead and use, um, you know, old boxes from Amazon and cut them up to the size of my shelving. So this is a uh, folded out box from Amazon. Amazon does not sponsor me. Okay. An old box from Amazon. And I went ahead and I cut my boards with the rotary cutter. I cut it six six wide by 11 high. What I like about this is when you get your yardage, it's 45 wide folded in half. If you fold it in half again, it fits perfectly on this board. And that's why I did this. So this is 45 wide, right? And then I folded it in half again and it just fits beautifully on the board and you don't have to fold it by thirds or anything like that. So this really worked for me. Also my cabinet was 12 inches high. Um, you can cut this 10 inches if you want. Also you can cut it in an inch. If you have a lot of yardage when you're wrapping it around, it thickens up the board. So if you cut it five wide, you have an inch of the fabric being thicker. Cause I found that I bought a lot of fabric that I had like three yards with it. Um, so when I wrapped it around, it thickened up that board. So this is a good way of just organizing yourself and or um, organizing your fabric and it's free it's free this was free for me because i had things that i purchased from amazon i had boxes uh, folded out just leaning on a wall and this was free i just had to use an old rotary cutter uh, old blade on an old rotary cutter and just use my ruler to cut the sizes you are going to need a lot of these so make yourself a huge pile and then as you bring out your fabric it's easier just to start wrapping up your fabric when you have a lot of these already cut up for you that's what i did also i ended up finding out that i had quite a bit of fat quarter fabric and i cut myself a board and you can do this four by four or five by five i cut mine five by five and i folded my fat quarters by three and then i also cut myself a little slit if you want to um i don't have an issue with my fabric shifting on me um and just roll your fabric and, and it holds together. You can use uh, safety pins to pin your fabric. You can also use hair pins. I saw a fabric store, bobby pins. Someone was using bobby pins to hold their fabrics together at a fabric store. Um, you know, I don't think it's gonna stain your fabric or do anything like that. Um, I use little um, baby pins. To hold this this fabric I cut five by six and the reason I did a little bit taller is because this was my half it was like a half a yard not a fat quarter or maybe it was not a yard but it was close to a yard and I just did this with this so when you're doing this you can just organize it to whatever size your shelves are and then fold your fabric to fit your to fit your box and it's also free it's cheap um, I ended up being glad that I didn't buy those boards because I cannot believe how many of these boxes I cut up to make these boards. I think I cut up up to 10 boxes, maybe even more, um, to be able to get all my fabric organized. So 
now I want to share some benefits of doing this okay benefits of doing this one benefit number one um, I am not going in every section of my house digging up fabric anymore because I have it in all one designated space benefit number two I found out that I was purchasing a lot of the same colored fabric and Lately, my eye is very drawn to aqua colors, and so I would go to a fabric store and buy a yard or two of one, and then I would go somewhere else and see the same. And so I found out I was buying the same color because my eye somehow was drawn to the color. Also, benefit number three, you realize that you have more fabric than you need. You have too much fabric, and instead of going to a fabric store to buy some more, there's almost this feeling of, you know what, you need to finish or use some of this fabric up and get through it um, that's really been a help for me I'm not going to quilt stores as much because I have a lot of fabric and the only reason I do go to a quilt store is if I'm looking for a specific color that I don't have when I look at my shelving so before I go to a quilt store now I look at the colors that I don't have and if I go to a store and I see aqua again I'm like no girl mm -mm. you have enough aqua you can sniff it, look at it, rub it all you want, but put it back. You already have 10 aquas on your cabinet. You have enough. So that's been a help for me there. Another help. <laughs> and this is why I did this. When I was looking for that back fabric, I made a mess under the long arm. I made a mess back here underneath. I have some fat. I had some fabric here. I had fabric underneath the table over here. And then I had some fabric in my closet. And so I literally wasted an hour and a half running around in these different sections of my house looking for back fabric. When now, when I have all my fabric all in line, I'll have all my back fabrics in the same designated fabric area. All I need to do is go to my fabric section where I have that cabinet and just pull out the fabric, sew on the, you know, sew the fabric on the leaders and I'm ready to go. In less than five minutes, I'm ready to start quilting and I'm not running around section and section in my house. And I made such a mess that day. Oh, it was so overwhelming and it was so kind of frustrating that I'm pulling out fabric and I can't find the fabric I want to do the quilt. It was so frustrating for me that day because it's, it's just such a revelation that when you're disorganized, your time is disorganized. Your conduct is disorganized. You, I didn't enjoy even wanting after I did the messes and trying to put everything back I didn't want to quilt anymore I was so exhausted so there are some benefits of doing this now it's gonna take you some time it took me a good um, it took me a good six hours to get this done but now that it's done the amount of time it's gonna save me I also cut myself some extra ones extra of these and I have them on the side of the shelf cabinet because when I do get some other fabrics that I do buy I am ready to right away put them in their spot and I'm not going to put them under the bench back here or under a table over here kind of storing them saying I'll get to them later I know where they are going to be they're ready for me to see and I'm ready to go and start playing because I think that's what this is really about it's really about enjoying enjoying the process of quilting not hunting it down hunting fabric down also benefit i don't know what number i'm on number five it's i found that i was losing fabric because i had it in so many different spaces i didn't know where my fabric was because i had put it somewhere here maybe in my closet in my room in places it shouldn't be and uh, I would probably go back and buy the fabric again so it saved me money um, because I have it I know where it's at and I have all my fabric in that space now so there's a lot of benefits in doing this but I think I recommend you do it on the cheap uh, do it on the cheap I did invest a hundred dollars on my cabinet in January when I built it I got it from Alphys Max 
So maybe invest in the cabinet that you like instead of investing on the backer board. I know they say, well, if it, it's insect proof, it's dye proof, it's this proof and that proof. The truth is, is my fabric is in a better place now than when I had it in my closet in the bag from, from Hancock's or in a bag from Joann's or in a bag from a quilt store. It's in a better place now because it's organized, it's off the floor, it's off being underneath somewhere. So I really do hope you like this tutorial. I hope you're okay with my word tangent. So yeah, uh, I'll see you in a minute, okay? Bye. Where's my thing? Where's my thing? Ah. It's like an old blade that I have on this rotary cutter. And I have my ruler. And this is a box that I got from Superior Thread when I got some bread. And I just go ahead and use the rotary cutter to cut it. I open this up. Oops, sorry. Just like that. I kind of like this size. It's okay with me. It's 10 inches. The other ones were 11. And I go ahead and I measure six wide. They're just going to be a little bit shorter. Or not. Here's one. You can even, if you don't want to have this, you could just cut it here. And honestly, it's going to work the same. You know, you know, some of these, they're six, and then this one's just five. Um, the, what I am concerned, like with these, I want to make sure that they're 11 inches at least high or 10. And I get a whole bunch going and make myself a big old pile. And like this one's a little bit more narrow. I, to me, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you're gonna be real picky, what I would do is I would use thicker, like, you know, a lot more yardage on this one, cause it's gonna get thicker anyway, and you're not gonna notice the difference. Over. I make sure that I fold the white in. I don't want no one to see the white. Just like that. What I like about this length, look how perfect it is when you fold it. And since this is a lot more yardage, I'll use a thinner board because it's gonna get bulky anyway. This is not technical at all. But this is gonna get thick because I think this is like three or four yards of fabric. So it's okay to go a little bit more narrow on your fabric or your box, you know, let's say, um, this is not six, maybe it's five. Just try to tape this as in line as you can get it. It is going to shift on you a little bit. And then I'll... Look, and this, this is my fat board to the thinner board. Do you see the? This was a thin board a five inch wide board and this was a six inch wide board. Do you see that it doesn't even look like it's different because I have more yardage on this one. There are quilt panels and all the coordinating fabric that goes with it. And you know what I find is I buy all this fabric to make like a little cute quilt top and it's all coordinating and I got kind of like the kit kind of. What do you do with it? Well what I'm going to do is I am going to fold this panel this way, fold it. And then I'm going to also this edge, so I'm folding it just like that. And I'm giving myself the three layers, one, two, three, four, and then the sixth one. It's a little bit higher than I want it to be, so I'm gonna bring my fabrics in so that they peek through, but they're as tall as this piece. Not too tall, but just kinda of tall. So then I have it like this, and then I'm going to start folding it, just like that. I'm going to fold this in, and then fold it. So now 
I know, I hope you see what I'm doing. Here's one, two, all of my fabrics to make this panel. And I have them all together. I could tuck this in. Just like that. To where this tucks in. Like this. And then when I roll it. I'm trying to do this where it looks professional. And then you tug it like that. And you can use a rubber band if you want to. Or you can use bobby pins. And then pin it just especially like right here and now you know these this is a kit to make like a little quilt top and you have all your fabrics together instead of them being separate so this is a cabinet that i bought at office max it cost me a hundred dollars and i wanted just to show you what it looks like from top to bottom and i have my sofa right there I do have a yoga mat behind there, but don't pay attention to that. Here, I want to show you, this is when I realized that I had a lot of the similar fabrics right here. That this fabric is pretty much the same looking as this one. This one just has a little bit of green. And I also realized that I don't need a lot of beiges anymore. Do you see how many beiges I have there? Uh, I left the top open because I like decorating with pretty things. Like I got this at the Houston Quilt Show. I need to hang it. I haven't hanged it yet. I want to hang it, but I love roses, and so I left this open so I could decorate it or put something up there, and then this fabric, over here I have like my patiks, my whites, and here it all tucks. Some of these boards, I did them bigger because I wanted the fabric to come out, so I think I did them lot wider than I showed you. I really found that I like see how the fabric recesses back more I found that I really like this and here I have some of my solids this is the back fabric that I was hunting for everywhere so that I could do the quilt for the elderly community and here I have like I found that like look at all these grays I have and I probably thought I bought this for a back fabric for a quilt couldn't find it and repurchased it and I'm sure I also did that with the burgundy because you see I have purchased like several amounts of burgundy what I also did with this too like this is a set of, of fabrics that go together for a quilt and I just put them all together in one section so here I have all my prints and like all my superhero fabrics all together so I know that if I want to do a superhero quilt I can these five fabrics all are fabrics that you can make a quilt all on its own all the fabrics coordinate together and they also I put them in one section on their own the, these also have the same thing this is a Robert Kaufman fabric and down here I put my books and this is my plastic fabric So yeah, I hope you liked this tutorial and I'll see you next time. And I really am sorry that I haven't been able to post videos like that. Summer has been sucking my life. It's been sucking my life. I have been so busy um, running around, going, taking, picking up, running here and there that I'm hoping that... Uh, my kids will be quiet long enough for me to be able to post even this video. So I'll see you soon. I'll see you hopefully. I'm going to post another video on the long arm quilting that rose that I did pebbles on. I hope you're okay with that. I hope you're okay with some of the quilting I've been doing. And I love ya. See you later, okay?